All right, I've been wanting to do this video for a while. This is the great shimming debate for hydraulic release bearings. And I've set up this test rig just to show you how it works, how the travel works, and what happens when you add a shim. How much travel you gain, how much travel you don't gain, what actually happens when you put a shim in this system. Keep in mind this bearing is always touching these pressure plate levers and we'll see what happens. So I've actually modified one of our release bearing bases to have a hole in it uh, as well as this apparatus that we made just for having this on a display and the whole point of this display was that someone could walk up hit the clutch pedal and actuate this clutch at uh, PRI. So we're gonna be taking this from show to show but basically put a hole in it that way I can contact the back side of the piston with an indicator and show you how much travel this thing has. Now, this is a full, a full stroke from a 7 8 bore master cylinder, so it's got a lot of travel, probably a lot more than you actually need. But uh, I've got this set up just to show you, you know, how much travel this particular scenario is going to have. So I've got my indicator zeroed out at uh, basically zero, and I'm going to try to go as slow as I can, uh, and we'll count the rotations together. Um, so that's one, two, three, four and almost to five so we'll do that again when you go really slow it doesn't work quite as good so one two three four five all right so there's our five so about five hundred thousandths and if you push it really fast you get a couple out thousandths extra and this system may not be completely bled because we're trying to do this in a hurry but you know you might get a couple thousandths over 500 so there's 505 Stabbing it really quick 500 five thousandths. All right, so now I can take this thing apart Add a shim to it just like you would if it were bolted to a transmission So you can imagine that this is the face of your transmission and this plate that the clutch is bolted to is the back of an engine In order to do that. I'm simply going to just move my indicator away and I'm going to loosen my bolt that holds my entire assembly together and I probably should have the right size wrench for this, but I don't. And what this is going to allow me to do is to pull my fixture away from my bearing. Just enough to be able to drop this shim in. And I'm using a 90,000 shim in this scenario. And I've cut the shim, modified the shim to where I can just slip over the shaft without having to take this whole entire assembly apart. So... Maybe I'll pull this back. And you know, I probably could take the whole thing apart. It wouldn't be too big of a deal. So now we've got enough. We can drop our shim in. And make sure that registers. All right, shim in place. So I'm going to tighten the assembly back together. Again, imagine that this is the transmission bolting to the engine. Nothing, nothing funny here. This is the transmission going in place. And let me make sure I get this clocked to the correct position for my holes line up. indicator to go back in place all right so now I'll tighten my bolt all right and like that we've added a 90,000 shim and the assembly is completely back together now I can reinstall my indicator simply rotate this up like it was before and my base on sorry make sure that it's going to move it's not moving currently I'm gonna have to readjust it a little bit there 
All right, I believe it's going to move now. And re zero my dial. Actually, I need to take my hand off that thing. One, two, oh. One, two, three, four, almost five. Okay. Try to do that slow one more time. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to do them a couple of fast ones as well. And as you can see, that gauge is going to the same spot, the same 500 thousandths of travel as it was prior to adding a 90 thousandths thick shim. So, no, adding a shim does not add travel. What it does do is it moves this piston on the release bearing closer to the base. There's where your actual air gap is. That's what that number comes from. And it's to ensure that the bearing is never going to overextend itself. It's never going to go past the end. It's never going to be out in the end of its comfort zone uh, past the point where it likes to be stable at. A lot of the factory release bearings are very weak and very thin. And when you put the bearing really far out on the end, they become unstable and they lose support and sometimes the bases crack and they give problems and to avoid that we recommend shimming and all it does is tighten this tolerance up because it's a very loose tolerance from the manufacturers because they don't check this stuff when they put it together they get everything close enough and that's how it goes out the door when we assemble stuff like this we're making sure that you're getting an optimal setup it's meant for longevity it's meant to make sure that this thing works as good as it can as flawlessly as it can for as long as it can that is the intent of shimming a release bearing. You will not gain travel by adding a shim.